everybody, I'm Dr. Marla here at the beautiful Sight and Sound Theater. Today on the program we have the villain and Samson, the actors. You don't want to miss it. We're going to have an interview and it's going to be so inspiring to you. Join us in just a minute. Welcome, Jacob and Connor, to the show, to All mm -hmm. Things Are Possible. I'm glad to have you all. Yeah, thanks for having yeah, us. Thanks for having us. You're the main characters at the Sight and mm -hmm. Sound Theater, and Samson yes. is Connor, and mm -hmm. Jacob is the bad guy. I am. I'm the villain. You're the villain. <laughs> so I want to go back and you just tell me, first of all, how long have you all been in the Sight and Sound production? Mm -hmm. uh, Samson? Actually, yeah, Samson. Connor. I joined the cast of Samson last year at the end of the 2018 run uh, i i came in and replaced a samson that was leaving um, we have three people in the samson track always um, and so i replaced one of those samsons last year and then i i stayed on for the 2019 run so i've been here for about uh five or six months now okay five or six months what about you jacob i've actually been with sight and sound since 2014. oh you've um, been here a while yes and actually in 2014, I was a part of the reading of Samson. Um, so okay. I've been on a very long journey with this show. Um, so it's been very special. I was in the premiere in Lancaster in 2016. Um, and then this was my first season here in Branson uh, with this show. So I'm very excited to be here. Well, that's exciting. And I've seen the show. You guys are amazing. Thank you. How long have you been acting in general? I have been doing theater since I was in eighth grade. Eighth grade. Mm. Yes. So it's just a couple of years ago, right? Yeah, exactly. A few years back. Yeah. Yeah. And how about you, Jacob? I actually, I started doing theater in college. Um, I grew up in a small town in Alabama, so there weren't a ton of opportunities for theater. Um, but I got hooked on theater when I was in college, and uh, the rest is history. So. The rest is history. <laughs> yeah. Now let's jump in a little bit. That's kind of your background. Tell mm. me about the show and your character. Let's start with you, Connor. How has playing Samson, what, what has changed your life in playing this role that has filtered into your life? How have you changed from playing Samson? <clears throat> have you seen some changes? Yeah, that's a great question. I think one of the biggest ways that playing the role of Samson has affected my life is that it's helped me get a different perspective on God mm -hmm. um, and who God is. And I think Something that's really cool about the character of Samson is that his life is all about perspective and how he views God. Because Samson spends his whole life um, believing in God and having a relationship with God, but his perspective is that God is this sort of crushing personality that's mm -hmm. putting things on him and forcing him to do things. And so I think in the same way that Samson goes through a perspective change at the end of the show, um, I've also found it really cool to play that role and and then have my own perspective challenged and maybe shifted about who God is and um, who I am in relation to that. Mm. Yeah. Would you say playing Samson has drawn you closer to the Lord then in the process? Uh, yes, I would say for sure. Uh, yeah, playing the role has, has definitely um, drawn me closer to God and also, yeah, just helped me to find um, a different side and a different flavor to that relationship. What's your favorite part of Samson's character? That's a great question. <laughs> I would say my favorite part of Samson's character is the fact that he is so honest. Um, he's not always honest with the people that he happens to be talking to in the moment. Um, but Samson is very honest in terms of what he's feeling, what he's thinking. He's a very sort of straightforward, blunt person. If, it's Sam, if Samson is, is mad, he's like, I don't like this, even, even to God, which is such a sort of scary, scary thing or weird thing that we sometimes are like, oh, I can't challenge God, God is God. But Samson is very much like, no, I'm angry. Why are you making me do this? Mm. Um, and that's something that's really cool and really f fun to explore and also learn from right. as well. Yeah. Okay, Jacob. 
What about you? How has playing playing a villain or being a part of the show changed your life? Yeah, well, I'm a lot meaner now. <laughs> so. <laughs> oh, that's yeah, no, 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 no. Because you're the villain. Uh, really good. No, it's been fascinating. Um, I think villains are always interesting to play. Um, it's difficult uh, day in and day out playing a character that is quote unquote evil. Um, but I think what's been fascinating for me has been um, finding somewhat of the humanity in him because I think at the core of every person um, there is this desire to do right and they think that what they're doing is the right thing. Um, so that to me has made it uh, such a complex adventure. Um, it has definitely been an interesting growth experience for me and my relationship with the Lord, um, just in the sense of this story of grace. Um, in any um, good story, there's always evil and always darkness fighting against it. And so being a part of that force has been um, it's been interesting for me. It's caused me to see areas of my life where maybe I'm lacking grace. Um, playing this graceless character um, has caused me to see moments where I need to extend more grace to others and um, maybe to myself. Um, so it's been a very, very interesting journey for me. Back to Samson. What has been the most challenging part for you over the last, did you say, year and a half playing Samson? About half a year at this about point, half a about year. six months, yeah. What has been the most challenging part for you, would you say? I think the most challenging part of playing Samson is actually probably the sort of pacing of the role. Mm -hmm. The show is very busy. There's a lot of really cool fight sequences in it, so that's a lot of um, action and a lot of sweating and, and running around. Um, vocally, there's a lot of music in the show. Um, and then also the acting scenes. So there's just a lot of stuff um, in the role of Samson. So I think the biggest thing is pacing and making sure that uh, playing the role now for six months and then we have another six months of our run, making sure that by the end of the six months, Samson is the same Samson as he is now mm -hmm. and not a tired husk of a man that <laughs> you know, can't even lift the jawbone and you know all of that. So. Yeah, I think it's speaking very... Speaking of Jawbone. Speaking of Jawbone, we yes. Have a, would you like to hold that, we have Samson? The jaw, it fe well, it speaking feels of Jawbone. Right. <laughs> Where's a Philistine? Uh, well, the villain is right the next is to right me. Right here. Here. There it is. Oh, it's not. Um, oh, boy, I better take that back. I don't know. It, it, might, it might just discuss. break out all over the stage. No. Yeah. What um, about you, Jacob? Tell us what's been most challenging for you. I would echo um, what... what Connor just said, um, this is uh, a very interesting space. It's a 300 foot wraparound stage. Um, so there's a lot of action and a lot of places to be and a lot of places to travel. Um, so it's a very physically demanding show. Um, vocally, it's a very vocally demanding show. Um, so yes, I think finding the balance of giving the audience 100% of what you have to offer, but also making sure that you can do that for every single audience member for each show, for each week, through the entire year. It's a lot. Um, so having consistency, um, but also excellence, um, and just in that realm, just relying on the Lord, um, having to give up the, the desire to control, because we want to control, we want to be able to control what we do, um, but in a situation like this, we just have to trust that the Lord is going to strengthen us and get us through each and every show. So, yeah. so speaking of mess ups, or even just speaking of cracking up <laughs> on stage, there's a part in the show where Samson tells a riddle to the Philistines, and Gaza, the villain, uh, cheats, finds out the answer to the riddle, and tells Samson, and Samson is really mad. So. On stage, Jacob says, well, the answer to the riddle, what is sweeter than honey and what is stronger than a lion? And normally he says it in a very sort of evil way. But one day he said, what is sweeter than honey and what is stronger than a lion? Oh. And I, for some reason, just a little hand, I just could, literally could not keep it together. I'm supposed to be so mad that he found out. Um, I don't know if you noticed me like giggle no, to myself that no, day. No, you're um, such a professional. But yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so you giggled to yourself like and you had to say, you I can't giggle to the crowd. But outwardly, yes. 
and off stage. Once you get to the once you get to the dressing room, you can all bets are off. All bets are off. You can yeah yeah yeah. Yeah. And that's a true actor is you can hold those moments and go, I want to laugh so hard. I'm laughing inside, but I've got to hold it together for the for the people watching. Mm -hmm. Did you ever think that you two would be in Branson, Missouri? playing these roles as Samson and villain, did that ever come into your mind when you were younger? Absolutely not. <laughs> no, definitely not. No. No. Uh, I, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, I was just going to say, I actually strangely had not, I had heard of Branson, but I wasn't really familiar with what Branson even was mm-hmm. before coming here. Um, and Where'd you grow up? Sound. I grew up in Wisconsin, so okay. not that far. Um, but just not quite close enough to ever visit here as a kid. Um, so even, you know, even just right before playing the role, I wasn't really sure what Branson was. Um, I'd heard of Sight and Sound again, but didn't know a lot about the company. So certainly nothing that I would have imagined as a, as a child and certainly much more than I ever imagined before coming here. And prior to coming here, what did you do, Connor? Yeah, yes. Uh, So prior to coming to Sight and Sound, I graduated from Viterbo University in Wisconsin with a musical theater degree in 2017. And then since then, I've been working uh, just regionally around the country a little bit. Did you um, audition here or in Lancaster? I auditioned actually in Memphis. Sight and Sound uh, attends a theater conference there and they hold some auditions and that's where I auditioned. So were you surprised when you got the part? I was. I was surprised when I got the role. Surprised and very excited. It was a very cool thing to get to get the call from them. That's awesome. I'm yeah. sure, was there many callbacks? Like, did you have several callbacks and then the final? Yeah, the, there were. So actually, in the process of getting the role of Samson, I auditioned in Memphis at a theater conference and then got a call from Sight and Sound asking me to visit their Pennsylvania location. So I did fly out there, um, did a callback on location there, um, and then from there got another call saying that I had gotten the role of Samson here in Branson. Yeah. Well, we're glad that you're Samson. You do an incredible job. Now, the villain, Jacob, (laughs) tell me about your background. Yes, um, my background, I I attended college um, at Jacksonville State University uh, in Alabama. And I originally went to school for opera. I was going to uh, sing classically. um, And I did my first musical while I was in school. I knew nothing about theater going into college. Um, I was very fresh. Uh, I did my first musical, which was Sweeney Todd. Really? Um, Yes. That's quite a... (laughs) I mean, it's kind of in the vein of Commander Gaza a little bit. That's true. <laughs> a That's little true. psychopathic. Um, but definitely so much fun. And I just really found um, a place where I fit in. Uh, musical theater was so much fun. And, and, and I just felt like um, there was so much that I could contribute in that way. Um, and so I, I started doing musicals. And, and from there, I started auditioning. I also attended a theater conference, um, a different one called SETC. Um, attended that, met Sight and Sound, um, and the rest is history. Did you have the callbacks? Same. I did. Yes. I, so I I went to uh, Pennsylvania as well and auditioned there back in 2013, I guess, uh, for Moses actually, um, and went to those auditions, went to those callbacks, um, and then found out a couple of months later that I got that contract and was so thrilled. And I actually moved from New York. I had just moved to New York. To live there for two months and then immediately went to Sight and Sound. So, uh, huge blessing there. Now, do you have any performers in your family, either one of you? Yes, I do have some other performers in my family. I'm actually one of seven kids. And so. Where do you fit in the seven? I'm second oldest of the seven. Second oldest, okay. Yeah. Are you the tallest? I actually am not the tallest. You're not the tallest. How tall are you? I'm. About six six, just under six six, but and you're not the tallest. There. How I'm tall? I'm not the tallest. I have a brother who's just a little taller than me, who's two years younger, um, and he's also uh, a music theater major in, in college, so he's graduating next year. Um, so that's very cool. And everybody, every, all the kids, all my siblings um, in the family have done community theater um, and really loved it. My parents are actually not big theater nerds at all. Uh, my mom did some theater in high school, um, 
but they never they never really pushed us to go into theater. It was just something that um, a few of us started doing and just ended up liking a lot. So all all of the seven siblings have at least sampled theater, and some of us have really latched well, onto I'm, it. Well, I'm trying to picture your family <laughs> with seven children that a lot of them like theater. Is it uh -huh. very dramatic? It's, it is. <laughs> a very it dramatic is. family. We were all homeschooled, so we were all in the house and, grew, and we're very close uh, growing up together. Uh, so it is very dramatic, and we would put on a lot of little plays. Uh, we would write uh, uh, little plays and even little musicals uh, for our parents and perform them when we were really little. So yeah, there's been, there's been a lot of drama. Well, I'm hearing <laughs> practice makes perfect, right? Practice makes perfect. Started when you were young. Absolutely. How about you, any performers in your family or background? No, not really no? at all, yes. So I, I grew up in Alabama. Um, there's not a ton of theater <clears throat> um, where I'm from. Um, and so I, my, when I went to college, uh, I'll never forget, they were having auditions for Fiddler on the Roof, which most people are familiar with. And I, someone invited me to audition and I was like, what is Fiddler on the Roof? I, I thought, I was like, is that a play mm. or what? People were stunned because I just, I grew up, we didn't have a lot of um, theater accessible in that area. Um, but my family, all of my family, my father's a pastor. Um, and so grew up with my parents singing in church and my, both of my brothers, I, I'm a, um, one of three, um, both of my brothers can sing and my brother can play the guitar. So we're, we're musical and we put on church plays, um, which were a lot of fun, but nothing really to this level <laughs> for sure. What is your favorite part of the show? Connor, we'll start with you. I would say that my favorite part of Samson is the fight scenes. There's really? Some, yeah, there's some really cool scenes. There's one scene in particular at the end of Act One up on this almost 20 foot set piece that's this mountain that Samson climbs and he finds the jawbone of the donkey and then the Philistines come and surround the mountain. And there's a good uh, maybe five minutes where it's just this battle between Samson and the Philistines and people running up the mountain. And we actually have a, a really cool effect where people fall off of this 20 foot piece and disappear into the, into the void. Um, <laughs> Which so, I hope you're falling like onto a trampoline oh, or something. We, yeah. <laughs> That's the magic of theater. 20 feet. Um, no, there is, yeah, there's a fall mat and we had, that was part of rehearsals, fall training and, and fight choreography and all that. So it's a really cool, uh, segment of the show at the end of Act One, just this huge fight scene. So that's that's my favorite part for sure. Jacob, what's your favorite part of the show? Selfishly, my favorite part is uh, there's a scene towards the end of the show where um, I'm able to interact with the audience a little bit, um, and it's just fun to um, be a part of the immersion. Mm -hmm. uh, but I would say, um, and it may sound cliche, but my favorite aspect of any sight and sound show is the um, what happens when the curtain goes down. Uh, at the end of every show, we have what we call after show ministry, and it's an opportunity where every person who comes to see the show can meet with um, people from all over the company who come together, people from retail, people from the cast, people from the crew, people from marketing, all come together um, and are available to meet any need, any concern, um, just to pray with you, just to love on you, just to be someone who can give you a hug, whatever it is. Um, and that to me is such a beautiful moment um, where we get to be the truly the, the hands and the feet of the Lord in that moment. Um, so that to me is always my favorite part of any sight and sound show. Well, I'm, I'm listening to both of you and I'm wondering, do you have, I'll start with you, Connor, do you have a favorite scripture that that is your scripture go-to? Great question. I do have a favorite scripture. My favorite verse is Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Um, and I really love that verse because I think going back to perspective on God, I think it really shows you what perspective God has for you and mm -hmm. what perspective God has for your life. And sometimes I feel like when you're in the middle of your life, you can't, you can't see where you're going and you can't even see where other people are going or maybe who God is bringing into your life um, that you need at that moment. And so that verse just reminds you to really trust that 
in the long run, God has plans for you to have hope and joy in your life. Thank you. And what about you, I do Jacob? have a, a favorite scripture, and it's, it's more recent, actually. Um, back in November, I was married. Uh, I just got married. Congratulations. Um, thank you. You're newlywed. Thank you, yes. Uh, and my wife, actually, I should have said this when I was talking about family. My wife is a performer. She actually works at Sight and Sound. Okay, She's so we're together. Us. Yes, That's yeah. awesome. And Did you meet plays, here then? Yes, we you met, met here? in Samson in, P in Lancaster. Um, Oh. And we, she plays uh, Samson's aunt in the show. Okay. So she sings a beautiful song in Act Two. Um, but we, uh, uh, very quickly in our relationship when we were dating, um, we sort of took Galatians 5, 22, 23 as our scripture um, because we, we decided very early on that we wanted our relationship to emulate the fruit of the Spirit. And we wanted to plant those seeds in our lives and our relationships so that as we continue to grow together, that that fruit would bear to other people. Um, and so we're, we're definitely daily challenging each other um, in love and joy and long suffering and um, compassion and kindness and um, just daily checking ourselves to be able to say, are, are we bearing that fruit because if we're not then something is off and we have to really check ourselves so I feel like that scripture is always a good reminder it's a checklist like am I being loving am I being right. kind am I being good am I being gentle um, and so especially playing day in and day out a very <laughs> anti-gentle character right I have to remind myself daily that's that's the fruit that I want bearing in my life so well and I'm listening to you say that and I'm thinking how much fruit you are bearing mm. with millions of people mm. watching this show I know it has to be on your physical body and mentally a process that you go through a little bit mm. that you're physically and mentally going through a production day in and day out and that mm. has to be sometimes wearing on you what what's that like in your life i mean how do you balance between i know stage takes a lot out of you right yeah. how do you balance that <laughs> for the rule of samson it's interesting because in addition to the rehearsal process with the whole cast and the on stage stuff we also had a personal trainer for the first couple months of the rehearsals and the run to get us sort of in physical shape for the role. Really? Yes. Like exercise? Yes, a workout plan. Um, I have a diet plan that I'm on as well. So even off stage, there are extra things to do for the role. So it really is interesting to think about, okay, how do I balance my life in a healthy way so that everything I do does not revolve around this production. So it's really about finding some, some downtime for yourself outside mm -hmm. of the show to have some time just to clear your head a little bit, do other things that you enjoy. Um, so in some ways it's really cool that the show is so big and even outside of the show there are things that we have to do to prepare, but you definitely have to find that downtime as well. Do you walk around town and people know you? Do they, re do they recognize you around here as Samson? Occasionally. Occasionally? Occasionally I was in Starbucks one time and someone said, that guy over there is Samson. Oh, really? Yeah, that really did happen. My niece, <laughs> is, is funny. In, she's in performing arts here. And yeah. Now tell me about you, Jacob. Same question. Yes, yeah. For me, uh, one of the biggest things, um, one of the biggest gifts that, that we have in our cast um, and in, in our crew at, in this company, we come together every day before the show and we pray before the show. That's incredible. Um, yes, yeah. It really and, is. And to be honest, I really feel like there's no um, better way to respond to that question than to say it really is the grace of the Lord. Like just daily, any production we've done at Sight and Sound, any production I've been a part of, it is very physically um, demanding. Um, and people constantly are like, how do you do sometimes 11 shows a week? And That's amazing. There's nothing we can say other than it's literally the strength of the Lord. Um, and you interviewed um, Kim Miller. She's such a force for us in ministry and prayer. Um, and we, in the, the uh, rehearsal process specifically, we have people who come in and sit during the process and pray the entire time. While you we're do, rehearsing. during yes. every rehearsal. Every rehearsal. We have people who are praying constantly That's through those rehearsals. Awesome. That, you know, and it's all volunteer based. These people are coming and they are just praying with us and, and linking arms with us. And so it's, it's such a huge blessing. This place is um, truly just a gift. Um, 
Yeah. It is a gift from God, isn't it? Truly. And you get to be a part of what God is doing through you. I mean, I hope someday, I think it would be so incredible if when we get to heaven, he could show us all the times, number one, we were protected. I would love to see that. <laughs> yeah. But all the lives we touch somehow mm. through just being obedient. Mm -hmm. You all are telling me you didn't even realize or know you were going to be in this play, but God led you here. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't it be incredible to see what all you've done through this production, the Absolutely. lives you've touched? Yeah. And you've touched so many lives. Mm. You both are being such an incredible blessing mm. to me, my family. I have four children, to the community, to people coming in from all over the world. Mm -hmm. So we're just so thankful for all that you do. And it sounds to me like Matthew 19:26, which is my favorite scripture, mm -hmm. is with man it's impossible, but with God all things are possible. Mm -hmm. And you two are a prime example of how God has led you to such a time as this mm -hmm. to do a work that he's wired you for to pour out of you into others mm. a blessing. And I'm just so grateful. Thank you for all you do. Yeah, thank you. I'm Dr. Marla from Dr. Marla Ministries. And I'm so excited about this program called All Things Are Possible. You know, scripture says, with man it's impossible, but with God, all things are possible. This ministry believes that all things are possible for you. With God, all things are possible. That means God has things in your life that you don't even think are possible can happen for you. God says he knows the plans he has for you, plans to prosper you, not to harm you, give you a hope and a future. This ministry is taking the gospel into the world. We're reaching the brokenhearted, the needy, the lost, those that need encouragement. So we'd like to ask you to partner with us. You can partner with us in several ways. Number one, you can go to my website, go to drmarla.org, go to partnership. And if the Lord leads you, you could give a financial seed. That would help us get on more TV networks to spread the good news of the gospel. We can also connect with you on social media. Go to drmarla underscore for Instagram or Twitter, or you can go to my Facebook page, go to Dr. Marla, and we're going to spread this good news through every way possible through social media TV network, and we are here to help you. We want to help you get above your circumstances. We want to help you rise above all those brokenhearted things that are happening in your life. We want you to go to higher depths and higher levels with the Lord because the Lord is our only hope. So join me. Go to drmarla.org, and we'd like to partner with you and help you with what you need.